Hey guys, it's Cass. Um, today I'm going to be showing you my fountain pen collection as of the end of 2020. I've seen a lot of people making videos like this and I love these types of videos so I thought I would jump on the bandwagon and do it as well. So my fountain pen collection is definitely, <coughs> excuse me, nothing impressive. Um, I have definitely see way more impressive collections out there <laughs> in other videos, but I feel this collection is curated to me and I'm, I'm very happy with it right now. Um, I am probably going to sell a few of them, mostly the Lamy Safari since I have an abundance of those um, as we go into the new year. So I do want to reduce it down just a little bit. I'm aiming for 10 pens or less in my collection and I think I'll be able to do that pretty easily once I get rid of the Lamy Safaris, um, but we'll see. I do have one pin planned uh, for purchase in the new year, and that is the new Parker 51. I think it comes out in February. I was going to buy it. It was supposed to come out in October, I think, of this year, but COVID, of course, pushed that back. So um, that is one planned purchase I have for the new year. Um, after that, nothing as far as I know. So it shouldn't expand too much in the coming months. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, let's get started. I'm going to start with the, I'm going to go by cost and just start with the lowest price pen I have, uh, which incidentally is the first pen I ever had or bought. Uh, this is the Nemesign Singularity Black Silver. Um, I bought this in 2013 on Amazon and it was $14.99. <laughs> uh, they eventually went up to like uh, $20, $25, depending on what finish you had, which I had a lot of them. I had the silver demonstrator, the rose, couple of rose gold demonstrators. I had the blue marble finish, and I might have even had another one. I don't remember, but I, I sold all those, but I kept this one. Um, I used this pen exclusively for at least a couple years, I think, or close to it when I first bought it. Um, this was my gateway I guess into fountain pens so it started off a very enjoyable journey I'm really glad I bought it obviously because if I hadn't bought it I probably would have never discovered um, all the cool fountain pens I have now or you know just ink stuff like that and it really helped um, continue my writing and my journaling it is so much more enjoyable to journal with a fountain pen because um, there's so many inks to choose from and the writing experience is so pleasurable if you have like a good nib, nice and smooth. So, um, yep, this pen introduced me to fountain pens and I almost killed it also. I put India ink or calligraphy ink in it um, at the time because I didn't know that that would kill a fountain pen. Uh, but luckily this pen, the nib and the feed come out so it was pretty easy to clean. Uh, Nemesign has since been discontinued or gone out of business or whatever. So you can't get these anymore. Um, I don't think unless a retailer has like stock left over. Uh, but generally this one is not really that easy to get anymore. Uh, which this one's in terrible condition. The lip has cracked and come off, which Nemesign was notorious for that. The singularities, the lip um, cracking. Mine just completely fell off and it's been like that for years. Uh, I don't use this pen anymore. It's more of a sentimental item at this point. Um, it's in such crappy, horrible condition. I doubt anyone would want to buy it anyway. Um, but it was, you know, really cheap. It's not taking up much space. So that's why I keep it. I don't consider this pen or count it as part of my collection, I guess, because I don't use it. But I don't, I'm not ready to get rid of it at this time. But I never use it or ink it up. So this one's just there without being counted. <laughs> so next up I have my Lamy Safaris. I have six of these. I actually have seven or eight but a couple of them I have in a box somewhere ready to sell because I never use them. These I still for the most part use occasionally um, but not enough to justify keeping them. For example the dark lilacs over here. I haven't touched these in forever. If I do ink them up, I don't reach for them. Um, so I'm actually thinking about selling the dark lilacs, uh, which is shocking to me because my favorite color is purple and my preference leans towards a dark red purple. 
which this pen color is more up my alley than the violet, which this is this year's special edition. This was the 2016 special edition. Um, and this is all black over here, which was 2018. Um, I would think I would like this one more, but I, I just really prefer the mono, not monochrome, monochrome clip. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. Just that it matches the barrel. I love that. And I just use this one way more. And I just haven't really reached for my dark lilacs. They don't get me excited like they used to. So I'm thinking about getting rid of these. Um, probably going to get rid of one of these as well because I don't need to. Um, I bought an extra of each one because they're special editions. And once they're gone, they're gone. And I didn't want to risk losing one or breaking one. Um, and then, you know, being without one of my favorite pens. So, but I don't, I'm very careful with my pens. I watch them like a hawk. I have never lost a pen before. So I'm thinking just about getting rid of these. I may keep one dark lilac just because they're so hard to find now. Um, but I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but definitely getting rid of my violet and I may get rid of one of the all blacks and just like keep these two, but I don't know. I'm still undecided. There's no rush. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's a Lamy Safari. There's not much to say about them. I'm sure you know about these already. If you've been in fountain pens for any amount of time, you have heard about the Lamy Safari. So, I'm not really going to spend any time on these. But these are in my collection. I have six, which is way too many. Uh, next up, also a Lamy, is the Lamy LX or Lux Marron. Uh, this is a beautiful metal brown pen. Uh, it's got gorgeous bronze um, accents, and I think it really complements the barrel well. I really, really like this pen. Probably will not get rid of this one. I just have to find a good ink for it. But really, really enjoy this one. After that, we have my Delta Unica in matte black. Uh, this was, I, well, yeah, I've, I've talked about this pen a lot on this channel. You've seen this one quite a bit. Um, this was a Goulet exclusive in 2016 or 17. It was mid 70 range. Um, so not super, ex not definitely not the most expensive pen in my collection. At the time it was the most expensive pen I had purchased. It was an impulse purchase. Um, but I don't regret it at all. This is a really good pen. It's, it's lightweight. It, feels great to write with. I have a Franklin Kristoff nib on there. I don't know why my camera is not focusing. That's weird. Oh, there it goes. But I have a Franklin Kristoff nib on here. It writes okay. Um, I may swap my Franklin Kristoff broad nib back onto this because it just, the medium is not like super wet like I like, I like so I don't use it as much. Um, but the pen overall is really nice. I really like it. I'm glad I bought it. Um, it's just, it's very nice to ride with. <laughs> so after that, we come to my Franklin Kristoff Pocket 66. Uh, this pen I have a love-hate relationship with. I love this pen. It, the looks are fantastic. 10 out of 10 on looks. Um, if you look up any reviews or images of this pen, you will see so many um, different types of inks in here and it just looks fantastic. This pen was meant to be eyedroppered um, and it just it's gorgeous. This is a gorgeous gorgeous pen and I spent months researching this pen. I bought it a couple of years ago or a few years ago pretty close to after I bought my Delta Unica so whenever the Delta Unica came out I can't remember um, but I did months of research on this pen and I paid close to 200 I think for it at the time because I got a Masuyama needlepoint nib on it which I have since replaced. Um, they still make this pen. This is their pocket version. They have like two other versions of this, like bigger ones, and they still make them, but they make them in very small batches occasionally. So you have to like sign up <laughs> to be notified. And by the time you get there to buy it, they're gone. That's, they just, they rarely make it anymore. Um, but this is, they have different types. So this is the solid ice finish. They have like an antique glass finish. Um, which is like greener, which I don't like. Um, and then I've also seen like white, totally white frosted finishes, um, black, green, and then they have like prototypes that they sell at shows and stuff of like these 
mixed colors, um, which are really beautiful. This is a gorgeous pen. It, the shape is awesome. It looks like a little squid in my, in my opinion. <laughs> That's one of the things that drew me to it. I really like squid. Uh, but the, the reason I have a hate, love, hate relationship with it is the section. So the section is super narrow up here and I like thick grips like my Delta Unica that has a really thick grip. It is so comfortable to write with. I can write with it for literally hours. This pen, I have to hold it back here, which I guess isn't so bad, but my fingers will start slipping the more I write with it because it's tapered and it's just way too narrow and I can't write with it comfortably for a long period of time because of that, uh, which I hate. If it wasn't like that, I would, this would probably be like top two or three favorite fountain pens, but because of the section, I just don't use it that often. And I have been this close to listing it for sale multiple times because I just don't use it. I've told myself there's no reason to have it in my collection if I don't use it. Um, but every time it came time to list it, I couldn't do it. And I would like, I'd take it off because I, I can't do it. I, I love this pen so much, but at the same time, I hate it. The section, I can work with it a little bit, but I don't know. It's, I'm sure a lot of people have like that pen that they want to love, but they can't 100% love it because of just one little thing about it. And that's this pen for me. I still try to make myself use it because it's, it's a beautiful pen. I, I like using it. And I like looking at it sitting next to all my other pens, but the section, the, the section, I uh, just wish it was a little bigger. Uh, but overall, it's a good pen. Um, I just, that damn section. So next up, we have the Lamy 2000. Uh, like the Lamy Safari, if you're into fountain pens at all, you know about this pen. Um, it's piston fill, hooded nib, 14 karat gold. Uh, it writes like butter and it just looks so sleek and sexy and I love it. This was also an impulse purchase from Colt Pens. Um, in the other video, I, yeah, cause I did that fine versus medium. Um, I talked about this. I bought the fine originally and then went, uh, got a medium, which I'm going to have to sell the fine cause I don't use it, but, uh, the medium one is so wet and smooth and I love it. So again, not much to say about this one. Everybody pretty much knows about the Lamy 2000. After that, we have one of my newer acquisitions. It is the Pelican M605 Stress Amon. I also bought this from Colt Pens because they have good discounts. Um, this pen is very, very smooth. Uh, it's got a very juicy 14 karat. This is 14 karat. Is it? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, 14 karat medium nib. It is also a piston fill, so it can hold a lot of ink. I spent a lot of time researching, well, this is an impulse pen purchase, but I also spent a lot of time researching it before I impulse purchased it. So I was trying to decide between the M605 and the M805, and I eventually went with the 605 because it's lightweight. Um, I can't really comfortably use a pen if it's over like 23 or 24 grams. Uh, Lamy 2000 is an exception just because of the way it's weighted, I guess. Um, cause the Lamy 2000 I think is 25 or 26 grams. Um, but with the way it's back weighted or whatever, it's not a problem for me to write with it. Um, but anyway, this pen's like less than 20 grams total, I think. And it's super comfy to write with. I love the looks of it. Um, I'm glad to have a Pelican. I have like a subconscious want to own like one nice pen from the major brands. Um, so yeah, I have a Pelican. <laughs> I really like writing with it though. It's, it's really nice to write with. It's a very, very smooth nib. And I love that finish. And it's got some, um, not distortion, but the, the bean day, the bendy, Bende, I don't know how you say it, uh, these stripes here, variation, there we go, there are some variation in the stripes, you get, some of them are kind of ripply, like there, looks cool, uh, but anyway, yep, like this pen a lot, here 
we have the Platinum 3776 Shein Special Edition. Uh, I made an unboxing video about this one a while ago. This pen I almost sold. Um, after I got my Lamy 2000, the nib on the Lamy 2000 is just so much better than this pen. Um, and the Sailors that I recently bought, the nibs on those are just leagues <laughs> ahead of this pen. Um, and the nib's not bad. The nib writes fine. It writes how a platinum is supposed to write, I think. It's, it's kind of dry compared to the other ones, but it still writes smoothly. There's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer some of the nibs on my other pens. So I kind of just stopped using this. I got a little paranoid because it's an it is an expensive pen. Um, this one retails for four seventy, but again, I got this from Colt Pens. If you haven't noticed, I'm a big fan of Colt Pens over in the UK, so I got this at a discounted price. I didn't pay like American price or whatever, but the it's a gorgeous pen, and it's comfortable to use and everything. I just the nib wasn't as good as some of my other ones, so I kind of stopped using it. Um, but I want to give it a second chance, and I might, if the nib keeps bothering me, because I once I've written <laughs> with like the sailor nibs, this one just doesn't compare. It's it's a little drier, which I'm not a fan of. But I might send it to a nibmeister because the pen is just so beautiful. Like I still enjoy having it in my collection. I've like decided like two or three times, like I'm gonna sell it, now I'm gonna keep it, now I'm gonna sell it, now I'm gonna keep it. And right now I'm in the I'm gonna keep it stage. So we'll see what happens with this one. But cannot deny that this is a beautiful, beautiful pen. The faceting is just gorgeous. It looks like running water. Whew. Sometimes I'll just pull it out to look at it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. All right. Almost to the end. Here we have my Sailor 1911 Large Simply Black. This is a European exclusive. Once again, purchased from Colt Pins. Um, the, it's the same thing as a regular 1911 Large in black. It just doesn't have the cap bands or the rings around here. And I just, I really, I like the look of it because it just, it flows. There's nothing here to interrupt the flow. And it has the juiciest, springiest, broad gold nib, uh, 21 karat. Sailor's 21 karat nibs are to die for. I think Sailor has toppled Lamy is my favorite brand simply because of their nibs. And they have a lot of cool designs too and like colorways that they come out with often, kind of like Lamy. Lamy does a lot of uh, special editions every year. Sailor does a lot of special editions. So it's nice that you always have variety to look forward to. Uh, but this one probably, I'm gonna say might be my favorite right now because I, I just love riding with it. It looks so good. I have to stop and just look at it anytime I'm riding with it. It's just so sleek. I just, I really love this pen. I would totally buy this pen again if something happened to this one. Very nice, very nice. Last but not least is another sailor. This is my Angel's Delight, the professional gear. This is the 2019 cocktail series edition, not 2018, like I said in a previous video. Um, I did show you guys this pen already. And <laughs> I told you I was going to try to convince myself that I could use the medium nib. Well, that was, that was a lie. I tried to, I couldn't do it. So I ordered a whole ass new professional gear with a broad nib, swap the nibs out, and I'll just sell that professional gear with the medium nib now. Um, but this broad nib writes just as good as the Simply Black. So it is super wet, super juicy, and beautiful. Oh, God, their nibs are just gorgeous. And this is a gorgeous pen. It is so comfortable to write with. I, I am madly in love with this pen. I'm madly in love with most of my pens. I'm very happy with my collection right now. Like I said, I'm going to try to curate it just a little more and get rid of some overflow like the safaris but uh for the most part I'm very happy with my collection I I feel content for the most part so let's get a family photo all 
I'm just gonna leave the safaris. Well, I'll put a couple safaris in here. I've got like way too many. And if you'll notice, you'll see a theme going on here. Just black and silver and purple for the most part, except for my Maron. Here's my safaris. And what the heck, I'll throw a dark lilac in there too. And the OG here. So this is my little fountain pen family. <laughs> Uh, let's see, one, two, three. So like 15 or 16 pens all together. Like I said, I'm trying not to count this one. I'm gonna sell a few of these. So we'll see where I stand in a few months. I will definitely um, make a video, if I'm still making videos in the future, um, a year from now. <laughs> I will definitely do another video like this and we'll see my, how my collection has changed. Um, and I'll also do that with the inks too. So I'm, I'm excited for that. New year. We'll see how everything changes. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about any of my pens um, or just any general questions, just let me know. Thank you again. Bye.